who's ready to play with some eyeshadow today? I'm going to be reviewing the semi-new Melt Cosmetics Bad Side Zodiac collection today. I ordered these a couple of weeks ago. I've had so many reviews back to back to back to back. This is like the last set of products on standby for me to do a review on. So, whew, there was a lot. All of the launches came at the same time, but I really was very excited for these. They launched four palettes. I did only pick up three. The one that I left out was the Fire palette. I just, I couldn't be bothered with another orange palette. I really couldn't. <laughs> the other color stories, I felt like, okay, I'm ready to bring on another one of those color stories, but the orange, couldn't be bothered. These are $38 each, which very affordable for melt, but still $38 nonetheless. So I left out the fire, but I do have the other three. The format in which I'm going to do these today is I'm going to have time stamps and we'll swatch and then do a look with each palette. Major details about these palettes, they are available on the Melt Cosmetics website as well as Sephora, which is where I picked them up. They are limited edition. These are a Melt Cosmetics holiday release. I preferred Melt's holiday release last year. I thought it was a bit more extravagant, but these have a plus side, which I'll talk about in a moment. And what is interesting, and kind of silly about these what makes them different from other zodiac palettes which very dated concept but anyways these are the bad side zodiac palettes so these are themed around the negative traits of each zodiac sign and i'm not really into zodiacs like that all i know is that i'm a tourist but it says you know the bad traits so the names are like harsh type a stubborn overcritical which i think is it's cute. I actually really like that. I couldn't care less about Zodiacs personally, so the theme itself didn't catch my eye. But anyways, talking about the price point on these, these are a pretty good price for Melt. Melt is kind of up there in price, but you get less product, so that's the catch here. Less product, but still less money, so that's personally what I prefer as somebody who has a lot of eyeshadows in my collection. I prefer just to have less product, honestly, and I feel like with makeup trends changing and how long eyeshadows last, I think most people would prefer less product, less money, so so I'm actually very happy about this. There's eight grams of product in each palette and each palette is made in Italy, which is awesome. I mean, last thing to note about all of these, just generally speaking, there are eight eyeshadows and they are quite small. Honestly, these look like ColourPop palettes to me. They feel nicer than a ColourPop palette packaging wise. They're a little bit more sturdy, heavy duty, have some heft to them, but they are cardboard. And because of these small circles, these look like they could be a ColourPop palette, but they do feel a little better made. So I don't know. I saw these and I was like, ColourPop. I was not expecting these to be this small, especially since I feel like generally melt palettes are bigger. Not used to having an itty bitty little melt palette, which I think is awesome for most people. That's really great for travel. Get a good amount of color in a small packaging. If you've never tried melt cosmetic shadows before, let's assume these are good quality. These might be the way to go because they're the best price and they're not too big and clunky. But anyways, that's all I have in terms of major details about these palettes. I'm gonna have timestamps for working through each palette and let's just, let's just get the colors on the eyes. We're gonna start off with the palette that I am probably the least comfortable with, which is the water palette. So this one is the blue one. It's gonna be interesting for me to create a look with this. Here's a look at the packaging. It has kind of this soft matte touch to it. It does come in a box, which is pretty much the same. And then it tells you the zodiac signs that this is based on. And here's the palette. It does have a mirror. It does not hold up on its own, just FYI. Here's the color story. I mean, while I never love blues, and honestly, when I wear blues, I feel I look a little crazy. Blues are the prettiest to look at. So this one has five mattes and three metallic shades. Let's go ahead and swatch these. I'm going to start off with the top row and then the next row here. Here's what they look like. I may have compared these to ColourPop, but already by touching them, they're already better quality. So we have Manipulative, which is a kind of champagne metallic. Secretive, that's going to be our transition shade already. Just a beautiful muted light brown. Moody, which is a shimmering turquoise. Gorgeous. I love this shade. And then we have Trust Issues. And this is a matte. Didn't swatch the best. Let's do another coat. 
This is kind of like an aqua greenish blue shade. Very pretty. We're gonna get into the darker row down here next. Here's what they look like. Ooh, I love the range that this palette has. Literally shades from light to pretty deep dark. That's exciting. Emo is a matte dark green. Not swatching amazing, but we'll see how they apply. Ugly Crying is a navy. Dead Inside is this deep dark semi-metallic it's almost just a shimmer here blue with a really dark black base color that's gonna be cool for a smoky eye i don't know that we'll utilize that today and then possessive which is just a dark brown this is a really well-rounded bluish palette i feel like there's more green to it in person it looks a little bit more blue online but super well-rounded lots of variety no repetitive shades Really happy with the colors that they picked for this. Eyeshadow base, I am using my Kaleidos Tone Activator, and I don't have any concealer on, which is why I look insanely tired <laughs> compared to the rest of my face which has makeup on, just in case we get some fallout with this. We have this beautiful transition shade right here, Secretive, so let's put it in the crease. Little powdery, just tap off the excess. My gosh, I really like this shade. Not really with the blue colors, like I'd wear this shade alone or with a neutral palette. Love this shade. For me, it's the perfect one to two shades darker in the transition area. So I'm just gonna put a little bit. We don't need too much. It's a blue palette. Let me not get too boring. Let's head into trust issues with the rougher number 13 brush. And we're gonna start putting this in the crease. I'm keeping it kind of low. We're not blending it up too much. Much, but I want to see if this is easy to work with. You guys know blues can be difficult to work with. It's not. I mean, it's working out great. It's blending out great. This brush, as you can see, it's not very fluffy. So it's taking a little bit of extra work to blend. But quality-wise, this shade is doing exactly what I want it to do. It's going where I tell it to go. It's not over blending. It's keeping the opacity. Gorgeous. Really nice quality. And sometimes Melt just does an amazing job with their quality. And then other times, it's like a whole different company made it. I'm going back into Secretive, that first brown shade, just to blend that. That was pretty darn effortless. I wiped off my brush on a towel. And let's try Emo now and see what it looks like right next to this color. And this one swatched a little funky. So I'm interested to see. So I'm focusing this in the outer corner for now. I am going to blend it in the crease a little bit more, but I just want to get this placed down in here. And then with whatever is left on my brush, bring it in. So this has a little bit more blue to it compared to trust issues. I wish I had a wee bit more depth just for this look, not necessarily to improve the palette. It's fine in the palette. I'm going back into trust issues, which is a lighter shade, and I'm going gonna use that to see if we can blend a little bit more. With blues, I'm very careful not to overblend because I don't want to look like I got punched in the face, you know? There's some shades where you can blend out all you want. It's gonna look great, but with blues, gotta blend a little bit more intentionally. It's looking good, beautiful blend. I feel like trust issues blended a little bit better than emo, but gorgeous. Let's do it. Ugly crying, the navy. And I'm gonna kind of wing it out using the same brush as you can see. So we're changing up the shape a little bit with this. Nice is popping out against the other colors. And then again, to not over blend, I'm taking a clean brush, blending with intention, just softening. And I take this little wing part, blend it inwards. Let's see if we can get all three shimmers on the eyelid. We're gonna start off with Dead Inside, which is this really dark shade that pretty much could be black. And I'm gonna start it off along the lower lash line, outer part, and then blend it up. So this is adding some depth. Oh yeah, if you put this all over the lid, you'd get an insane smoky eye. I'm not quite bold for that right now since we have other colors to test, but you can see the shimmers there. We got a little bit of fallout, but very, very pretty. Let's try Moody now. This is gonna brighten everything up. These shimmers are beautiful. Look at that with a brush, very impressive. 
I'm taking a pencil brush into manipulative. I want a pencil brush because my eyes are small, so I need a small brush to just fit in this inner corner. Ooh, I just love all three of the shimmers in here. Gonna take a brush and we're gonna blend out the edges of each of the shimmers, particularly the dark one. I got a little bit of fallout, but nothing that's upsetting me. I'm gonna put on a little bit of concealer real quick. Ooh, this look, it's so good. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm into it. So I'm gonna start off with trust issues on the lower lash line using that refer number 13 brush that has been carrying this whole look. Then we're gonna deepen with a bit of emo and this is going out halfway. And here you can really see the differences of that color and the one we just used. Then of course we have to use ugly crying. With a pencil brush, I'm going into manipulative. I want that to go in the inner third of the eye. And then in the middle, we have to have some of Moody. And I'm re-blending in a little bit of ugly crying. Liner and lashes, and we'll see the final look. All right, guys. So I was scared. I'm scared of blue, but I stinking love this look. I used the Maybelline Tattoo Studio in the shade Arctic Skies in the waterline. And then I used the ugly crying shade, the dark navy, as my liner at the top. <gasps> This is so pretty. I mean, this is a really high quality blue palette and I love the versatility of this palette because everything is like different tones and different depths. So you have a lot of range with the types of looks that you can create. You can go really dark and smoky. You can go bright and light. This is everything that I personally would want a blue palette to be. So I'm really happy with this. I'm happy I ended up picking it up. I almost didn't because I was like, Morgan, you never wear blue palettes and you hate yourself in blue. But this look is stunning and it was so easy to do. So if you were interested, this one is amazing. <laughs> Since I did blue, let's do a purple on this eye. Next palette that I have is the Air palette. Now this one, you know, is right up my alley. I had to get it. It's a purpley palette. Why would I not? So that's the back. And here is the inside. So at the top, we have kind of more pinky peach. And then the bottom, we have the pops of purple. So I guess it's not as purple as it seems, right? But we're definitely gonna get a look that I love. So let's go ahead and swatch the same situation and these also have five mattes and three shimmers so here are the first four shades and this top row right here just looks like a true peachy pinky palette so we have frivolous which is a metallic peach shade very pretty you can see how good these shimmers are then we have indecisive which is a matte mid-tone peach ghosted well this one's a little bit more of an orangey peach you can see these mattes don't swatch amazing but they apply really great. And then Too Faced, which is a pinky peach metallic. Very, very pretty. Getting into the bottom row now, which is definitely more my speed, though this purple is really deep. I wish this had like a lighter lilac shade. I guess it does right here, but like a mixture between these two, right? Mind Games is a plum. Flaky is a dark metallic purple. Chismosa is a very poorly swatching mid-tone matte purple. And then Reckless is a very, very light whitish lilac. I'm going into Chismosa again to see if we can improve that. I am not surprised this is swatching bad. Shades like these are really, really hard for brands to formulate. They normally act a little funky. So this is the Air Palette really cute. I'm so in love with the blue. I think I like the blue better than this, believe it or not. But let's go ahead and apply this to the eye. Getting the primer down. So we're gonna start off with Ghosted right here, which is a matte peachy shade. And I'm applying this to the inner half of the crease. I'm blending kind of high. This is a BK Beauty 201 brush. So blend her kind of high. Nice, it has some color to it. Would be really pretty as a blush if you wanna do that. Then we're gonna see how Ghosted it is. Wait, did I just use Indecisive or Ghosted? <laughs> Do these look the same? Did I use the same shade? Okay, anyways, I'm putting Ghosted right here, Decisive in the inner corner, or whatever I just did. They kind of look the same. Ghosted is a little bit more orange. Sigma E24, and we're gonna do a lot with this shade since it's swatched so bad. We're just gonna make sure she's in the clear, she's okay quality. So we're gonna pat this in the outer corner to start. Okay, so far so good. We are gonna meet the first two colors in the crease once we're ready to blend them out. This is a Sigma E24, blending in beautifully with the inner corner shades. I'm gonna take a little bit of Ghosted on the first brush that I used. 
I'm just going to use that to blend out the edges of the purple. I want to kind of bring this ring around a little bit. It will create a little bit more cohesion in the look. But yeah, I'm having very little trouble blending this. It's not blending like butter per se, but it's definitely good enough, especially for a purple like this and it built up enough depth. I actually wanna take it a little bit further onto the lid. We'll let that one have a bit of a bigger moment, you know? That's stunning. Taking a BK Beauty A502 brush, we're going into Mind Games, which is the dark purple. And I'm putting this in the outer corner, and then I'm getting it close to the lash line as well. I love a lot of depth right here. I find it very flattering for my eye shape. Cleaning off the same brush, and working on blending that out. Wow, this adds a lot of depth. <gasps> I really like this palette too. These matte shades, I mean, laid down the foundation for this look. You can see how beautifully blended it is, how much depth we have, the colors that they chose for this. Once again, so well curated. Listen, I was expecting for me to not be blown away by these palettes. I was expecting for them to be good, but like something you can get from ColourPop. These are super nice. I am heavily shocked. I'm going into Chismosa again. I just want to bring out that lighter purple. I don't want it to be hiding underneath the navy. We're going to go into Flaky next, which is the dark metallic purple. I think ideally if I weren't reviewing this, I probably wouldn't use this just yet for this look because I kind of like the matte, but we got to test it out. So I'm putting that right over top the center of the lid. It's very pretty. I'm going to push it back as well towards the dark plum. So this shade you can get a little bit of fallout with, but it still is very nice. It doesn't have the craziest amount of shimmer to it. But again, if you like a smoky eye, this is perfect. I'm taking this random Sigma brush and let's do a little bit of Too Faced, like just a tiny bit because my eye is so small. <laughs> and I'm just gonna like that. Make that noise when you apply it as well. Hey, okay, that's pretty. I mean, the shimmers in here are super pigmented. will apply any way you want them to. Wiping off the brush and let's apply Frivolous, which is a little bit lighter. Oh well, yeah, this could be used as like a highlight shade. Like right here as well, you know? Take a pencil brush. I have to see what Reckless is like because this is almost like a duochrome shade. So I'm applying this right to the inner corner. I'm getting it on the tip of the brush. This is a refer number three. And I'm almost going to create kind of like a faux cut crease with this and have it running right over top just to give that extra bit of brightness when the sun will hit. I could do this over again if you're recreating this look. I'd go less in the dark shimmery purple flaky so that more of the peach would show through, but it's still really pretty. Let me pop on some concealer, clean up, and then we'll do the lower lash line together. I'm taking some of Ghosted now. I'm gonna run this along the entire lash line, looking up while I do it. I have to be very careful because I'm not setting with powder on my under eyes <laughs> because I'm taking this makeup right off. Chismosa. We're gonna keep the purple pretty far back on the lower lash line. I want more of the peachiness to show through on the lower lash line to kind of compensate for how much the purple took over back on the upper part of the eye. And then we're going into Mind Games, the Dark Plum. Morphe pencil brush, we're going into Too Faced. Putting that in the center of the lower lash line. See, I tell myself not to put too much shimmers on the lower lash line, but I just, I love the gleam, I love the glow. And then finally, some of Frivolous. That's gonna brighten things up down here. And we used every single shade in this palette. Once again, a success. Liner and lashes, one moment. Here's the final look with the Air palette. Once again, really, really stunning. I think I like the blue palette a little bit more. I like the color story a little more. I know this is the purpley palette, but it's it's more pinky than I thought it was. I mean, nonetheless, it's a gorgeous palette, gorgeous color story, gorgeous quality. Don't have anything bad to say whatsoever, just preference-wise. I had a little bit more fun with the water palette, but if you like this look, you like the vibes of the color story, I have nothing bad to say. And I'm really sad because I have to take these off now to play with the last palette. I think I'm gonna take a break and just walk around with this and feel myself. <laughs> and then we'll get to the last palette. So I will see you guys very soon. But yeah, both of these palettes, I'm feeling real good about these. All right, let's get into what I think, I wouldn't call it the most wearable, but this one's giving me total fall vibes, the Earth palette. 
And this one, I am a Taurus. Um, like I said, I don't really know much about zodiac signs. Somewhat true, I suppose. Anyways, <laughs> here's what the palette looks like. How pretty is this? Fall, right? I like how these are more cool tones and neutral down here, but then you have crazy uh, gold pops and this green. I think we can do something fun and unique with this, but let's swatch it. Mm, I already know the gold's gonna be like wham bam pow. Yeah, right? Okay. Heart of Stone. Ooh, not a good swatch. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, no, bad, ugly, okay. Way harsh, sheer, over critical, hey, pretty, know it all, a nice metallic shape. So yeah, the mattes here is dew swatch, really sheer. But that green, we gotta do something with that. RBF, ooh, this shade has me written all over it for neutral, everyday kind of look. Oh yeah, look at this. This is right up my alley. RBF has some warmth to it. It's matte orange. A little bit more brownish though. Materialistic is a metallic brown. That swatch was incredible. Type A. A dark maroon. And then Stubborn's kind of a cool gray. Ooh, the mattes in here swatched horribly. Okay, let me put these on one eye since this is the last palette I have to work with and we'll do the look together. Alrighty, it's time for the last look, which you can see we got all the fall vibes from. So if you are looking for a fall palette, this is it. I'm actually going to skip the first color that I used on this eye, which was stubborn. It's just too cool for the look that I want today. I want the crease colors to be a bit brighter, but I did use this. It's good quality, so in case you were curious. I'm going into Way Harsh, which is this really cool kind of dirty mustard. And I'm going to apply this to the inner half of the crease. And you can see it is showing up great. It's not too transparent or anything like that. We're going to blend this. This applied great, no issues. Blinged Beauty E3, and we're going into RBF, which I think looks more neutral in the pan, but it really is quite orange on the eyelid. We're gonna blend that. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this all over the lower lash line as well. So this is a pretty typical warm setup for me. I like an orange in the outer corner and a yellow in the inner corner. Okay, then we're going into Heart of Stone, which you guys saw how horribly it swatched. It applies great, so it's just one of those shades. You know, like, look at this. It's actually because it swatches sheer, it's a buildable formula. I think it makes it a little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to blend out. So yeah, those horrible swatches really meant nothing in the grand scheme of this palette because look at this. I mean, it's pigmented, it's blending nice. I'm putting this in the outer corner and I'm cleaning off my brush because I did get a little bit too much product on there. And I'm gonna blend this. And you can get a lot of depth with this shade. It's really nice. With a pencil brush, I'm going into type A. And I was just testing this. It really doesn't go with this look so well. But this is going on the inner part of the lower lash line. And it's going to give a fun kind of a smoky effect to the look, right? But again, it wasn't really something that I was too focused on. I'm taking a Sigma Dream Eye Perfector and we're going into Know It All, which is this copper shade. And this is going, oops, wrong side, to go in between the center of the lid. So we're gonna have the lighter gold color on the inner corner. And this is going to blend into the green, which it did a great job of. Sometimes when you use a shimmer and a matte next to each other, it can look really misplaced and not good. It won't blend in with one another. These do fine, even though they aren't even that close in color. And to kind of aid that, go use the brush that you applied the green with. Just blend them and it looks fine. Then I'm taking a small lid brush and we're going into over critical which is the gold shade right here and I'm applying this to the inner corner you can see it's very very pigmented it has a really nice gleam to it gorgeous quality I mean nothing more needs to be said about these palettes they really are gorgeous I'm putting just a little bit down here to brighten that up and then go through reapply whatever you feel like was kind of hidden um, I know you're like Morgan what is this mess I'm just gonna take my concealer brush and we're just gonna clean up and then that's it 
It's as simple as that. See, so much better. Now for eyeliner, we're gonna use two different eyeshadows. So I'm gonna start off with the Heart of Stone, which is the dark green. And this is gonna be the liner on the outer half of the eye. And you're not gonna be able to see too much definition with the green since we have it in the outer corner. That's fine. We're just kind of getting a little bit of depth and smokiness near the lash line. Wipe off the brush. And then we're going into type A. Just because I wanted to see more of this color, it didn't get much use. And I'm gonna press it against the lash line. Again, not really adding too much, not getting a really precise line, just adding that little bit of smoke in the inner corner so that lashes will look good here. Picks up great. Then we did get a little bit of fallout from using these as liner, but that's it with the eyeshadow. So I'm gonna clean up underneath here, put on lashes, and we have a gorgeous fall look. So this one is great as well. I mean, this look is incredible as well. It really brings out my eye color. I had such a lovely experience with all three of these palettes. I don't know that I have a favorite. I would say the one that surprised me the most was the water. I was really happy with how the blue turned out and I just feel like it's such a well-rounded palette. I mean, this palette that I have on my eyes is totally a must-have for fall if you're looking for a new palette. And I think my least favorite, surprisingly, was the air, but it's still amazing. I guess it's the one that surprised me though. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think all three of them are equally as good. I'd imagine the fire one is good as well. I just didn't need those colors in my collection. Not that I needed these, but you know, I wasn't excited about it. I didn't want to spend my money on it. Dang. I mean, Melt did a fantastic job with these palettes. If you are looking to try Melt for the first time, these are really, really nice. And they are more on the affordable side, so if you didn't want to pick up one of their big palettes, this is great. If anything, I feel like this one might be a little bit better quality. I had no issues today whatsoever. And I think all three of the looks that I did today were absolutely stunning. So I am beaming after this video. What a successful review. I can't believe it took me so long. I'm sorry for, first of all, calling you ColourPop because you are much better than ColourPop quality. And I like ColourPop quality, but these are like high quality shadows. I'm sorry for making you guys wait on this review because it turned out it was really, really good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you go ahead and do that. I review a bunch of new makeup that comes out and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.